Alternative education is probably one of the most misunderstood uh, things that we have. People just don't understand what's going on. Alternative Learning Education, or ALE, is a separate program in public schools for students who need a little bit more help keeping up in regular classrooms. These students have test results that indicate they have the potential to learn, but have demonstrated difficulty succeeding in the regular classroom setting. Their success may have been affected by any number of factors. They may have family distractions, manageable medical conditions that affect their studies, or behavioral disorders that manifest at school. Alternative learning classrooms house a smaller number of students per teacher or lower pupil teacher ratio. The teachers have the freedom to utilize innovative teaching techniques that support and encourage students in their efforts to receive high school diplomas. ALE costs the state a few more dollars because of the extra resources, but the payoff benefits everyone. Statistics show the more high school graduates a county has, the better the local economy. According to the Alliance for Education, the Arkansas economy would see a combination of crime-related savings and additional revenues of approximately $77 million each year if only the male high school graduation rate increased by just 5%. In 1992, Arkansas legislators passed a law instructing every school district to offer an ALE program. Most districts used the classes for students exhibiting discipline problems. Schools were not using ALE as a possible avenue to teach at-risk students, but used it as a punitive assignment of detention. It wasn't until 2004 when the law received funding that school districts took this law seriously and reconstructed ALE classes as intervention-based centers focused on student success. The law does not give specifics on grade levels or model programs to follow, but individual school districts decide their design and direction. Although Arkansas school districts have made improvements in their ALE programs, many administrators and teachers have to battle the stigma from ALE's punitive years. While some students are still assigned alternative programs, many are electing this non-traditional form of education. Current ALE programs are finding success in serving students who have not succeeded, for whatever reason, in traditional classrooms. Many communities still feel that an alternative education is rewarding bad behavior because the students already had a chance to succeed in a regular classroom so let's don't make it easy for them. That's, that's one of the main misconceptions about alternative school is it is a place to warehouse kids, it's where thugs go, it's for the trash. No, no, these are people, these are human beings, they have problems and we're here to help them solve those problems. And so many of the students that come are afraid to um, be even seen on our campus because they have this negative concept of what alternative school is. It's not, it's not what people think, it's not for behavior. It's not, it's not a BD class, it's not that. It's for children who are average or above average intelligence who are not successful for a variety of reasons. Uh, ALE is not punitive, but oftentimes when school districts are at the end of their row with a child and they don't have the resources on campus, then ALE became that, that resource. Uh, alternative learning would probably be under, in my dictionary, would be a school for students who need the extra help. In Arkansas, we allow every school district to determine what their hardest to reach students are. They have to, by law, have an alternative education program. They may focus on how they're going to deliver that according to their needs. You want to do some research on what your area needs before you decide what your focus needs to be. It was a difficult decision but children's grades in the ninth grade and above, then you're talking credits, then you're talking, you know, a lot of uh, paperwork and a lot, a lot more requirements that really don't have anything to do with the affective side of children. And the research all shows that you can identify at-risk children as early as third grade. But early on, we did a really, uh, what I would call, comprehensive assessment 
of trying to zero in on that risk population. And we looked at evidence-based research at that time to look at those kids that were from a range of nine to say 16. And we broke them into two groups, 13 up to 16, nine up to 12. And basically what came out of that is that we noticed that the body of research showed a more positive impact on those kids that were nine to 11 or at that time, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and now we've dropped down to third, fourth, and fifth as the real at-risk kids that were trying to uh, develop those cognitive and effective skills to make them productive, positive citizens in our school system. You know, we're, we're trying to get kids back on track. Normally they don't have that problem in our elementary schools. So we, the problem usually starts around about seventh or eighth grade. And we try to get the, keep those kids from dropping out. That's, that's the whole goal. We used to have a, an ALE program that was just for the middle school. And because we had a consortium ALE for the high school students with Clarksville and Westside. And because of numbers, they couldn't accommodate all the students. And so we needed to have our own program. And so we were looking for what we thought would be the model program. And in visiting with the Department of Education, they recommended the JAG program. And we liked everything we saw primarily because it helps prepare students for the real world for jobs. In general, our elementary programs do not exceed 10 students. So you have one teacher up to 10 students, and I say up to, the younger the students, the lower the numbers. That's very successful. Well, at one time it started out as 15, uh, several years ago when we first saw alternative learning environments uh, as, as a requirement or a, a suggestion really in the state of Arkansas. And that didn't work. Uh, it, it was, it, there was still too many children. And most of the research had even shown that until you get well below the, the 15 to 1, you're not going to make a lot of difference. 95% of my class is small group. Um, I work with very small groups, two, three, four kids, and then we rotate this, those in and out. You finished? Okay. That's fine. I like that one, Kyle. Leave that just like that. When you're here, it teaches a lot like hands-on, and like right beside you, helping you step by step. You know, they, mo they interact more with the kids here. They take the time with you so you know you're caught up with the, your classes, your, with whatever um, class you're taking. At real school, like, people want you to skip a class and go here with them and go there, and, like, here you have no opportunity to do that, so. I think the big differences are that I have to be more patient with the off-task responses that in a traditional school may seem uh, off task, inappropriate, intentionally disruptive. I have to take that and redirect it the way we want it to go. If I am always saying no, no, don't do that, stop, we don't get any, there's no learning. Oh, you wrote mom. You didn't tell me you were doing that. And you spelled it right everything. For all of the students involved, it's a matter of finding out how they learn, how they absorb information, and then feeding it to them in, in the way that they receive it. Sometimes I'll have classes with a bigger um, a variance of age group, so I may have somebody that's 15, 16, and I may have somebody that's 19. And you look at a 15-year-old that just kind of was probably an at-risk, discipline problem kid, and those types of things, and their behavior versus a 17-year-old, and then they're thrown into a class together, and that sometimes is pretty difficult to achieve that gap. You have that group of students who have the lesser experience uh, in going into a school that may be mixed with a, with a young man or young lady that's you know, 18 or 19 years old and that is a lot of influence on a, on a child who has no experiences whatsoever.
I flunked when I was in uh, A grade, my first year A grade, because, you know, I couldn't concentrate. Bad kid. Well, why, it's not that you're bad, you couldn't concentrate. What were you concentrating on? Oh, the girls. You know, <laughs> me being Chris Hine and all, I gotta have my women, because that wouldn't be me if I ain't have them. state does have qualifiers, uh, not set in stone, but some guidelines um, for kids. There are kids that are at risk, kids that are homeless, uh, kids that are single parents, um, kids that lack uh, sufficient emotional support at home. There's a whole gamut of things that we go through to actually qualify. I chose to come to the Jesseville Fountain Lake ALE program because I have a two-year-old son and it made it a lot easier. Um, he is in first step and coming up here allowed me to see him off to school and be there before he gets home to school. Uh, I think that uh, initially you're thinking alternative education kids. Uh, this is a kid that smokes, this is a kid that drinks, this, and that's not the case. Uh, I think we're finding out more and more this is, the, this is the student that had to work the third shift and that's why they can't make it to school. No, like my diabetes just started messing up bad and get real sick. Like days just constantly vomiting, just going through that. When I first started teaching, it was the uh, exception to have kids that didn't have two parents at home, mom and dad. And now uh, it's the exception to have two parents at home, mom and dad, that are there every day for their kids because I was behind on my credits. Why were you behind on your credits? Because when my parents got a divorce when I was in the seventh grade, I just kind of fell through the cracks from there. I moved here from Las Vegas, and when I moved back here, I took a major credit loss because some of the Nevada credits didn't transfer into Arkansas, so they didn't count them and I was steered in this direction to the school for credit recovery. I didn't have enough credits to um, graduate and like I was, my ADD was getting really bad and I couldn't cope well with like a lot of people in one classroom. A lot of times, uh, for instance, ADHD at that age, a lot of times they think they're just bad kids and they haven't been shown just sit down and be quiet. When in fact, if they're ADHD, you're asking them to do something that's impossible for them to do. Like when I was on this medication, it was like a few, it was like, okay, I think it was like three, two or three years before I got off of it. And when I, when I first got off of it, like a few months, I was all hyper and bouncing off the walls and stuff. Like when the teacher talk, I talk try to talk to people, try to get their distractions. Well, really, I was a class clown. At Central High School, I just continued to fight. But back here, I just got my mind on my right to get out of here in December. They have not been successful uh, socially in the school setting, being a part of um, football and basketball, athletic facilities, club, facility, club activities and that sort of thing. And oftentimes they come to us not feeling like they deserve to be a part of that. I feel like JAG is just a place for people who really don't, you know, get, who really don't get along in school very well or, you know, feel like they're a little bit pushed out of everybody, like, just not, they don't really fit in very well, you know? I don't get along, well, I didn't get along with people that much. So I didn't like nobody telling me nothing. We've always had therapy as a part, our therapeutic services as a part of the ALE since the Jesseville Felt Like School District started this program. This is the seventh year. I believe that when our kids walk in the, in the door, there's a certain amount of baggage that comes with them. And I think there's only a limited amount of control that they often have over that baggage they bring with them. 
the schools, they're the ones that decide if they want a school resource officer. Uh, sometimes they have to be persuaded uh, about the, the benefits of it. I, I've spent most of my time here uh, within this program here, and, and I see most of these students pretty much throughout the whole day, and, and I have an opportunity to speak with them and also use myself as a role model as well. I felt like we needed a resource officer in the school system because I needed somebody that I could have as number one on the speed dial. I do not have a policeman on my campus. And a lot of people have wondered why, you know, the um, traditional schools have them. But I don't want one. I, I really don't. To me, that is a negative in the eyes of these children. Well, this is Logan. And uh, he's a three and a half year old German Shepherd. Kind of like bringing a police officer to school and let him talk to the kids about whatever soccer, you know, their baseball game, musical instruments, you know, rap music, whatever it is. It, it shows them in a different light. It's very surprising for people to realize that in Arkansas, there is not a university program specializes in training for alternative education teachers. There is no training that you can go to that will actually give you that uh, certification area and so all of the training has been done outside the system. One of the, the, the issues I think that we still have a long way to go is teacher preparation programming uh, around students that are uh, having unique needs. Yes, we've got programming around special education, students with learning disabilities, but we're not talking about learning disabilities. We're talking about functional disabilities sometimes, and it's not behavioral necessarily, because many times the, the behaviors are just um, a release to the inability to function in that traditional setting. Well, one of the, the issues early on was um, having a, a teacher who may be certified in English but was required to oversee or teach all the core subjects. And so the commission wanted to ensure that those teachers could become proficient, highly qualified is the term used. And so they set up academies working with uh, Lori Lamb at the Arkansas Department of Education. And those academies are offered so that a teacher who needs extra um, um, hours in math or in science or in social studies, for example, they can go to the academies and get that intensive in-service and professional development in that core area. Planning on being a teacher, so I want to teach things to my to students and, and be a second grade teacher over here. Because I, I like I wanted to be a defense lawyer because I believe everybody should have a second chance. I think I might go into the Army maybe. Uh, if not, I'm probably going to try to get into computers. I want to be a pediatric physical therapist. I want to go to college. I don't know what I want to do, but I know I want to do something that will make me a lot of money. I want to work in a nursing home. Be an officer. Because I like to run and chase people. I'm going to Baptist. I'm going to be a cosmetology and I'm going to get my art in. I want to be a traveling nurse. And I'm trying to finish school. The first one out of my entire family to make it to their senior year and hopefully get their diploma. So, Well, I wanted to be in a Marine and then I wanted to be a Sebastian County Sheriff. TV. I want to be on TV. I want to be an actress like stuff for Tyler Perry and all that, because I write plays and stuff like that, but yeah. I have a lot of animals at my school, I mean, in my house, and I wanted to kind of be a vet, but I like, like talking to people and stuff, so I want to be a doctor. I, when I graduate, I want to go to school to be a massage therapist. I know I want to go to Kaizen, you know, I'm hoping I can play football. And right now I'm trying to become a DJ, you know, like rap music. I love listening to beats. 
I want to go to school to learn how to paint cars. Uh, marine veterinarian. If you're gonna ask why, I just love animals and I love the water. I like being in water swimming. I've always really like wanted to go into like an art kind of thing, but I think when I get older, I like I guess art would be under you know more of an architect kind of thing, and I want to you know make plans of houses or something like that. Uh, right now, I want to go to. Um... Henderson and study, and I want to study education, major education, and come back and be a teacher. After I get out, I'll come back into society and be a police officer. I grew up, I'm going to be a teacher. I do too. I really want to be a cheerleader. A cheerleader. Our payoff is them getting out of the cycle of poverty. I know one thing, we'll have at least 10 or 12 kids that are going to leave this year, I hope, with a diploma that wouldn't have had one. I had a kid live this year, dream was Marines, and found out last week he was accepted into the Marines. And then when people say, I teach alternative education, they're like, oh, it's kind of like when you say you're a doctor, you go, oh, you're saving lives. Guess what? We are too. Oh, it's a robber.